Karen Gordon with Film Courage, the radio show. I'm here with the filmmakers of Bold Native, Casey Suhan and Dennis Henley. And we just finished our interview, and uh, there's a couple questions we didn't get to ask. Um, I know you sold out five cities of screenings of Bold Native, I believe. Is that right? Portland, L.A. Portland, C L.A., Seattle, mm -hmm. D.C. Um, and we've also done screenings in the U.K. and in Belgium, and we're setting up more screenings now. We have one in San Francisco coming up uh, November 18th. With John Robbins, John Robbins. Um, author John Robbins, mm -hmm. and activist Jay Conroy will be there to speak. So, yeah, we're setting up college screenings right now, um, and some more cities probably. But, yeah, we've been basically doing event screenings where we attend and we try to have speakers there from the local community, whether it be farm sanctuary people or authors like John. Um, and it's been great. I mean, one thing that's made it possible is the new social media, you know, applications. Yeah. We couldn't be doing what we're doing without Facebook. Like Facebook has been amazing to connect with people who are passionate about the film or the, um, you know, animal rights in these groups or in these cities, and like they have really helped publicize the film in those places. Well, they're also inviting the film there. You know, I think we have to go through emails. It's part of um, the, the self distribution strategy is engaging people to get really proactive about we want the film here in Minnesota, we want the film here in Texas or wherever they happen to be and we have I think about like 400 emails that we have to answer we haven't gotten back to you yet, um, but we will we had <laughs> a screening in Des Moines, Iowa and that was at an unconventional screening place, it was um, uh, a place that's a bar but also does events and does concerts and screenings and, and, and that sort of stuff um, so, and that was totally set up, organized by a guy named Adam who was passionate about seeing the film and showing it to other people. And so he set it up, he got the screening, he publicized it, and I think there was like 50 people, 50 there. or 60 people in Des Moines that came out to see the movie. And so, like, and we did that as a fundraiser for a couple of activists who were being targeted by the legal system. Um, and so, you know, I think that kind of thing is something we want to do more of and something that, like, we're able to do because we do have like this core audience that's passionate about the film. I think in terms of like we've been self-distributing the movie and that's our goal with this is to self-distribute it. And uh, it's challenging and uh, it's definitely made possible by the fact that we're, we, you know, we're a film that, that does have a core audience. It doesn't mean that's our only audience. You know, we can expand beyond that core audience, people who are interested in animal rights. But those are the people who have been helpful in getting it into theaters, getting it into like screening venues, and then hopefully reaching out to other people. Whenever you make a film, you know, like, unless you have an audience, you, you might as well like look in the mirror, you know, or gaze at your navel. We were talking about navel gazing the other day. Like, you want to be having a conversation with somebody outside of, you know, the team that made the film. And I forgot where I was going with this. What was I going to say? I don't know, just know your audience. I think, you know, it's something to, to know from the beginning when you're visioning the film. You know, when you're thinking about what is this film? I mean, I, you, you talked about, um, you mentioned the screening of, like, Paradise Recovered, which uh, is a film by Stormwood and, and Andy Redwine, and, like, that's a film that is about, you know, religious cults and about finding one's faith. And so they knew that there was a core audience of people who are interested in religious films, but maybe haven't seen a film that challenges some ideas, you know, in the way that they wanted to see. And so they, I mean, uh, in talking, you know, I'm a friend of Andy's, uh, in talking with her about the film, she was always conscious of, like, who would be interested in it, you know, and I think that that's something that if you're going to pursue a self-distribution route, I don't know that they are, they may find a distributor, they're doing festivals now, um, but even, you should always assume that you may have to if you're making a film on your own, because you never know that some, there's never going to be that knight in shining armor that's going to come and take your film. You shouldn't assume that's going to happen. It might, but you never know. And so figuring out who your audience is and how you're going to connect with them like emotionally and get people passionate about the film, um, I think has got to be part of the, the design of the film. Yeah, you know? and I remember my point. My point was that distribution isn't always a good thing either. You know, um, we had a, a film called Rock the Bells that got picked up by Warner Brothers, and you would think, oh, great thing, like, Warner Brothers is going to have the resources to get this film about the Wu-Tang Clan, right, to the Wu-Tang audience, and they were, they got caught up in Batman or whatever the heck else they were distributing that year, and we were this little movie that got lost, 
And there are some hardcore fans who have found it, and we're constantly meeting people who, who have seen the film and really like it. But, you know, you're not making a film, especially a film like Bold Native, that is about issues just for yourself and a small group of people. You want it to find an audience. So even going into this, I think we knew that self-distribution was something we were interested in doing because we had had that experience with Warner Brothers where it just got lost. And, and, we, and you, that's the worst thing that can happen to your movie is that it gets lost and it doesn't find its audience. So engaging with people directly is really important and keeping control of it is really, really important, I think. And it may take a little bit longer because you, you and a small group of people are setting up this college tour, trying to figure out how to connect with those people who are engaging you from other cities and saying we want the movie here so it might take a, a year or six months or whatever for, to actually get the film to them but if you control it you'll be able to actually do that so that was actually something to us from the get-go that um, was important is that we maintain control we distribute it ourselves and we figure it out and know? we we had a really great experience of distribution and we continue to with the project that we do called the Sanford Meisner Masterclass and it's basically this DVD we worked with the Sanford Meisner estate on um, which is eight hours of Sanford Meisner teaching a master class in 1980. That they just had the footage and they needed it put together, so we edited it together and we distributed it for them just through our website, MeisnerDVD.com. And it continues to go out to people every week. We send out copies every week and it finds new people because it's very specifically about something. And if somebody types in Sanford Meisner in Google, it will take them to the MeisnerDVD.com website. Um, and there'll be a Google ad on the side. Um, and so there's people looking for it, and it doesn't really exist, and that's the same thing with this. People looking for something about animal liberation and animal rights, and hey, there's lots of documentaries, but I can watch a fiction film too and learn about this thing that I'm interested in. I think this is, there was a, a you know, I think Take Down and Falls is a great example of this as well. Like, this is a film about a subculture, and I think that's a smart thing to do as you're thinking about making a film, is to say, what's a subculture or a culture that I'm interested in that maybe hasn't had a story told about it? And because you can tell any story, there's only seven or whatever, right? You know, there's like <laughs> these basic numbers of stories. You can tell that within any culture. So there's a culture you're interested in that hasn't had like its stories told. Um, you know, we weren't with with Bull Native. We were just we weren't thinking about this because we came up with this idea so many years ago. But now, as we're thinking about new projects, we're definitely thinking like before you make it, who is the audience? You know, who are the people that haven't had their story told that that are going to be the ones who are going to be your partners with this film because that's basically what they are. They're the ones who are helping get the word out. And if you can make a film that somebody types into Google, you know, whatever they're passionate about, and you can reach them immediately for like 60 cents a click or whatever it is, you know, on Google AdWords, then, you know, that's an amazing tool and something that I think should be in the consciousness of storytellers from the very beginning, you know?